Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us this evening on our webinar to discuss incentives and why incentives work. Um, we're going to discuss a uh, various different incentives that are available, uh, the few that we work with, and then we're going to discuss a few of our projects that have incentives associated with them that are available for financing, um, and then we'll conclude with some Q&A. Um, this is a very specific topic. I anticipate tonight's webinar running about 30 minutes um, due to it being very specific. If you have any questions at any time, please ask them. We'd love to hear your questions. Um, this is being recorded, and we do share this with our fellow audience that is not able to attend tonight. So your questions are important. I will repeat them, and we will share them with the audience. <clears throat> My name is Scott Lurie. I'm the founder of F Street. Um, almost hard to believe, but it's almost been 20 years since I've been involved in the real estate business and uh, really proud of what we're doing here at F Street. Um, <clears throat> F Street focuses on uh, an investment approach uh, where we're looking to revitalize communities, we're looking to create value for our investors, and we're looking to create generational wealth for our investors as well. All three of those things come together, <clears throat> and we do that through our three different verticals. We have our lending platform, which is our private debt fund. Our private debt fund is a 10% uh, coupon fund. It pays cash flow every month. Uh, we just are releasing a compound interest. Uh, as Albert Einstein mentions, the eighth wonder of the world is compound interest. Um, we are releasing the private debt fund is turning into uh, the ability to have a compound interest component to it. We're really excited about that. We also make investments in industrial as well as multifamily. We do that in two different components. We do that in value add, which means that the existing structures are already in place and we're making some form of improvement, whether that improvement is to the tenancy or to the actual physical structure. And then we do ground up in both of those sectors as well. So um, we're involved in real estate. That's what we know and we love. Uh, we've got an unbelievable investor database uh, and we have a lot of participation in all of our deals and we're really excited to be here with you tonight. <clears throat> So we're talking about tax incentives, right? What are tax incentives? There's a lot of tax incentives that are written in our codes that people take advantage of. You get depreciation, you get deductions for, call it meals and entertainment or, or bonus depreciation. In our world, tax incentives in real estate development are a real thing. We call them yield enhancers. We call them opportunities to make deals actually viable. And the real code behind it is the but for this incentive, this deal would not work. <clears throat> and so um, tax incentives are very commonly misunderstood, but they're a very simple um, concept. So let's talk about them. What is a tax incremental financing? We call them TIFs for short, but a TIF is simply, it's a public financing method where the community is supporting some form of development or improvement to the community and they do that through tax re revenues that are gonna be generated at a future date. That's as simple as it sounds, right? We're gonna do something today, we're gonna to build a building, we're gonna create infrastructure that's gonna be good for the community and layer apartments on top of it and the improvements are gonna be financed through a TIF. We're going to uh, add 156 units of multifamily dwelling in a community that needs housing and in exchange for that, the community provides us with subsidy through a TIF, through a tax incremental financing program, the TIF program um, that allows us to make the deal. And we pass that deal along to the entire deal. And it really, it, it really is a stimulant for economic growth. Almost all components of deals that we're working on today have some element of a TIF. Some communities are very well versed in them and very sophisticated to them. And some other communities are very new to them and there is a very big difference in who you do business with and the, their approach towards TIF and TIF financing. So TIF models. When TIF was really created or when it was, was originally conceptual, it was really created as an upfront incentive program, right? It was created to create that stimulation, that stimulation inside of a community, inside of an economic world and um, you got upfront TIF. That means that the community paid you money by way of dollars, real dollars into your deal. And so they do that by they would write a check or they would participate with upfront cash. This is very rare today. This upfront TIF program happens very, very, very seldomly. 
and when they're able to happen, those are great opportunities. There's very specific economic drivers as to why an upfront TIF incentive would happen. Um, but as you can imagine, in any program where a government is giving money upfront, there was massive abuse to it. And so what they what shifted to was was what we call a pago tiff, which means if you build it, if you do what you say you're gonna do, you will get the tiff or the subsidy over a period of time. And that happens generally through an abatement of tax, which we're gonna talk about in a minute. And that abatement of tax uh, happens over a period of time. And that period of time of the abatement of tax plus the period of time gives you the total TIF. When you have the TIF on a PAYGO, what happens now is we can take that PAYGO TIF and we can monetize it at some form of a net present value to get to a dollar that a lender will give us those funds so we can bring those funds into a deal. Or we don't have to bring those funds into a deal and we can take the subsidy on a going forward basis. Most of the time, we take the PAYGO TIF and we monetize it so that the amount of equity that needs to be brought into a deal is brought down and the investor returns are brought up. And so um, those are the two forms of TIF that happen. Almost all of them are assumable. So if I were to build a building and, and if we were to partner on a building and we wanted to sell it, that ongoing subsidy is transferable and allows for that value to be, that we've created to continue to be with the project. So why do TIFFs happen? Well, TIF, TIFFs are a, win, a true win-win uh, uh, concept. There, there's nothing more than a win-win. The community gets the, A, the new infrastructure or the new building or the new community center or whatever's being built. And in exchange for that, um, we get an abatement of tax. And then at the end of the day, when all of that happens, usually in 19 years or some distant period down the road, the community starts receiving taxes and the building is self-sufficient and running on its own. Um, TIFs really incentivize development. If you're in a pro-development community, you'll know TIFs. If you're in a community that does not provide TIFs, you will know that because it will not be moving forward with massive development. Nashville, for example, does massive TIFs and they're, 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 they're stimulating that economy and driving all of the demand from all of the technology that's coming into Nashville. Um, the city of Milwaukee, for example, does TIFs, but they do them very limited and they don't do them for certain categories, multifamily, for example. And that's been an old um, hindrance to the, to the community in the city of Milwaukee. Oak Creek, Wisconsin, the village of Brown Deer, Wisconsin, pro TIF. Uh, every development that goes on in Oak Creek has some form of a TIF and that community is booming. So to talk about other incentives, I'm just gonna run through these, not to bore you with them. We're not gonna really cover these, but there's other ones from pre-development loans, which we take advantage of from time to time. This, this program right here, actually for Brown Deer 2, BD2, uh, the village provided us with a pre-development loan. Um, it's not forgivable. Sometimes they can be. This is not a forgivable loan. This is just a pre-development loan where we were able to actually acquire some land and it equals the land acquisition that happened um, at the time. There's pilots, payment in lieu of tax. Um, that, those are also structured and then there's infrastructure support where the municipalities will co-invest in infrastructure. We're gonna build a river walk. We're gonna build new sidewalks. They'll participate alongside of that. Um, we also have grants and subsidies. Some of our programs come with a grant from the Wisconsin Economic Development Cor Corporation or they'll become from some other municipality where they'll receive grants and those grants generally are one to five hundred thousand uh, dollars which is material dollars and those generally do not get repaid um, you have some transit oriented developments where you're, you're dealing with big public uh, transit systems we have one of those going up here in Milwaukee in our backyard one of the big one of the big two that you hear a lot about is is that a historic tax credit deal or is that a light tech deal low income housing tax deal um, these are two deals that are, are very valuable. They all have their nuances to them and they're all very important in the stimulation of providing affordable housing and uh, reno renovation of historical buildings. Um, 
Other incentives that were continuing, new market tax credits, uh, op zones, uh, opportunity zone tax incentives, which was created, sales tax exemptions, and then energy efficient tax incentives. So there are a lot of municipalities and there are a lot of incentives. We as developers focus on the two primary uh, oh, um, incentives, which are really TIFs and grants, and most of our TIF is uh, Paygo TIF. So maximizing investor returns strategic um, with strategic TIF incentives. All of the TIF incentives, every dollar we're fighting for, turns into yield enhancement for the transaction. And it all happens really simply by us saying that we're not paying income tax, excuse me, property tax on the deal for a period of time. And that period of time allows us to enhance yield and in exchange for that, the city's giving us that money to pay the tax. That, think about it that way. We have a tax bill, the city repays us, okay? We don't have a tax bill for X years that, um, while we're in development and then we create value, the city reimburses us for the tax rate. 92, 95%, 12 years, 19 years. So we create strategic partners with municipalities. There are municipalities that we work with that get TIF. As I said, there are some that don't get TIF. The ones that don't get TIF are really hard to work with. Um, we are working with a municipality now that's very um, tight on their TIF requirements, yet the infrastructure and requirements to build is very expensive today, and so we're not aligned. Uh, optimal incentive, we want to make sure that the TIF is enhanced for investor returns, as I mentioned, and then we look to make sure that, that it's a long-term community impact. We want to make sure that we're building something that is material and important to the community, and we do that in all of the developments we're building today um, and that we've created, and those all are also equally important to us at F Street. So active deals with incentives. Um, we've just completed our, our Brown Deer project about a year and a half ago, two years ago. This, this project, um, well, this pro investors have the opportunity to capitalize on two incentives. So we have two projects that are going for financing right now. Uh, we just finished one in Brown Deer, and we also finished one in Oak Creek. Both of those had different incentives. They were both TIF incentives. Um, and so without getting too confused, we right now have two active deals that are available for investment that have TIFs from one is the village of Brown Deer and one is the city of Oak Creek. Both of the investments have, um, both of the deals have different reasons for their TIF. The village of Brown Deer is providing us with a significant PAYGO tax incentive and financing support. So this is providing 156 units of market rate apartments in the village of Brown Deer, and in exchange for that, they're providing us with significant PAYGO TIF money and financial support. In Oak Creek, where, we were, where we're building a 66-acre redevelopment that also comes with a massive amount of infrastructure. And so the city is investing heavily in both the horizontal construction and the vertical construction, right? So vertical is what we're building. Horizontal is the infrastructure that goes underneath, the roadways, the sewer, the water, the, the gas, the, all of the stuff that goes underneath it. So uh, F Street, OCLV, MF2, this is Summit. We discussed this. Phase one was a success. Phase one is six months ahead of schedule. It's already done. It's, um, that's called Coast. It's already um, six months ahead of schedule with cash flows beginning in Q3, just 18 months after construction. We have a great relationship with the city of Oak Creek. Uh, we are projecting a 20.48 IRR on our new 132 units of market rate apartments in the city of Oak Creek. There is a $7 million TIF associated with this deal. We are building a class A development, 132 apartments, construction and leasing is 12 to, 24, uh, 12 to 14 months, and then 10 months after that, uh, pre-leasing starts six months prior. We're working already on strategic refinancing of this asset, which allows us to return not only uh, investor capital, but provide a long-term cash flow position for uh, ongoing cash flow. We generally distribute cash on a monthly and quarterly basis. So looking at an investment, let's just talk about this investment quickly, right? So it's a 8% preferred return, 100% of the free cash flow goes to you, the investor, until you're repaid 100% of your money. This is a very unique concept that we do here. 100% of, of the cash flow is, goes to the investor. And then after that, the investor maintains 60% of the cash flow, and then once everybody's repaid, we participate as the sponsor at 40%. 
We anticipate a, if you've made a $200,000 investment uh, for 1.47% of the ownership of the Class A shares, <clears throat> uh, you will receive a 8% preferred return. And we, we plan to be completed in 20, Q2 of 2025, 14 months after we start, and have tenants in place by Q3 of 2025. Refinance, Q4 of 25, and cash flow, uh, quarterly on cash flow going into 26. So uh, unbelievable opportunity with a great tax incentive already in place. Lakeshore Commons, let's talk about the TIF. The city of Oak Creek, when they put their money where their mouth is, have provided us with $30 million for the horizontal infrastructure. $30 million the city of Oak Creek has put into this deal. Phase one has got 17 million. The vertical TIF for MF2 or, the, or Summit is $7.075 million. We are getting a $7 million yield enhancer, which is allowing us to deliver returns to the investor through the way of a PAYGO TIF over 19 years. We have a 19 year horizon, which is unbelievable. This is a really long and really prosperous uh, community, and this is a great TIF. So let's talk about what a TIF does, right? Taxing it for a summit apartments. Approved TIF, City of Oak Creek has provided us with $7 million. It's payable over 19 years with a 95% real estate tax rebate. So if our tax bill is $100,000, we're paying $100,000 and they're giving us back $95,000 and they're doing that for 19 years. That is unbelievable and very powerful. Investors benefits. The TIF provides extra annual income to the investor. It's that simple. If I don't have to pay the city the $100,000, the $100,000 goes to the investment. So one of our other projects is F Street BD2 or Village 43. This is following on the success, as I mentioned, of our already, of already stable Green Lake residents down the street. We're already down the street. We already have proof of concept. We've already done this once. We're just rinse and repeating. We're doing it again. The only difference is we're getting another TIF. We're projecting on this deal a 24%, 24.12%, 24.12% seven year hold period. There's a strong demand based on our market reports for, for housing due to the proximity of Milwaukee infrastructure, as well as a uh, new, new village center and 10 mile park. The city, village of Brown Deer is investing heavily in the 10 mile park, which is in their community. And they continue to make material investments to improve their community. Let's jump into the numbers. Um, it's a class A development. Um, construction timelines 10 to 14 months. Uh, we pre-leasing starts six months prior to opening, aiming for stabilization after 12 months, and we're going to have ongoing cash flow. F3 plans to distribute free cash flow on a monthly basis to investors. So let's talk about it again. Here we are. You got an 8% preferred return, which we already discussed. This is based on a uh, $200,000 investment. 100% uh, of the free cash flow all goes to all of the investors until you're 100% repaid. Until the 100, your $200,000 is back to you, plus your preferred return, all of the cash flow goes back to you. After that is repaid, you maintain 50%, we share in the GP at 50%. We intend to refinance uh, in Q4 of 25, once the building's stabilized, and project after that we will be continuing to return cash by, by cash flow to the investor. Project partner, Village Support. P Village has provided us already with a, as I mentioned, a low interest rate loan on the acquisition and demolition of the property. We already have that, that's already in place. On a vertical TIF, follow me here, we're getting $7.28 million on a PAYGO TIF incentive over 19 years again. This is another huge win, and as if you recall, we're projecting a 24% IRR. So let's talk about what's happening. Infrastructure and trails. What's happening in the village of Brown Deer? The village of Brown Deer is investing heavily in their own infrastructure. We love when communities are investing in themselves. They're adding a 10 mile park, which is a beautifully designed park right between our current project and our old project, or the one that we've already completed. F Street works with the communities that are growing for the vision of development. That's what we're excited about. And we're integrating a retail component, which is on the corner, which is separate, separate entrance and parking, which is on main on main corner, which is an unbelievable idea. So, um, that's a great question. So the question is, why is there different splits to the LPs uh, on the projects. 
And the reason there's different is all about the IRR models and where the equity becomes equitable. And so in the Brown Deer uh, deal, there's a 24% or a 4% additional IRR, which, which shifts the, um, the paradigm from 60-40 to 50-50 for us. Um, we've worked really hard with the village to increase our incentives and to get the density on the site to be able to make it a win-win and to get a couple extra uh, $100,000 in TIF money from the village. So um, it, it's all math at the end of the day, um, but uh, equitable math is really what we focus for, and that's the main reason for the difference. Um, are there any other questions before we run through a couple other things about F Street that I'd like to answer for everyone on the TIF side? Sure, so we'll jump back into questions in a minute. I also wanted to just mention our, our F Street private debt fund while I have your attention. Uh, our private debt fund is now uh, offering a, a compounding component, which is, uh, as Albert Einstein says, the eighth wonder of the world, which is compounding interest. Um, steady earnings, we distribute the money if you're not compounding. At the end of every month, we pay a 10% return. Uh, that's an annual return, so we pay 1 12th of 10%. Um, your investment is secured. Um, your money is used for us to relend those funds out in our private lending business. And um, we started that business with $700,000. We have about $92 million in the fund today. We're adding about $2 million a month. Uh, investors are seeing tremendous value in receiving a 10% coupon. Uh, some people want to get paid. Some people want it to compound. That's up to you. Um, so the power of compounding interest, which we described, here's the power. I mean, this is really, if you look at the compounding nature of it, that's really the power of, of compounding interest. And, you know, as Albert Einstein says, compounding interest is the eighth wonder of the world. He, he who understands it earns it, he who doesn't pays it. And um, pretty profound for, uh, 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 to be said many years ago, but uh, if you look at compounding interest in our world, um, here's the difference of, of where we are. And it, it's material as the years roll on. Compounding interest is, Unbelievable. If you have any interest in discussing it, I'm happy to take your call uh, at any time or investor relations. Here's how it kind of works. With a $120,000 investment, you earn $1,000 a month, you receive a 1099 INT, and you have a, after a one-year lockup, uh, you are, have a 90-day call provision to get your funds back. Pretty simple. Why is it simple? So everyone can understand it. It's easy for us to explain, and it's easy for investors to participate in. Here's the fund benefits. F Street has never missed a payment in 15 plus years of business. We've been paying out this return every single month for the past 15 plus years. I've never missed a payment. We're profitable, we're making money. You want to invest with people that are profitable and we've never missed a payment. Uh, capital demand, we have huge demand. We got over 330 applications last month for people to finance with us. Um, there, there's tremendous demand in what we're doing. Um, and if you're looking for a monthly return, uh, this is the opportunity uh, to deliver monthly returns. Uh, in uh, 2023, we paid $4.210 million to our investors. Pretty, pretty cool. So a little bit more about F Street. Uh, if you go to fstreet.com, if you are not a current investor, I see some of our current investors are on here, some are new. If you don't have your accredited badge, come and get it, it's free. Uh, I know people can attest for how easy it is. You go online, you type in your name, you put in your information, you get your, the accreditation has to come from a third party. We are governed under the SEC, under the 506C governance, which requires a third party accreditor. It's all seamless and integrated into our program. And um, please get your accreditation and we're happy to answer any questions you have related to uh, F Street or any of our deals. Um, so I'm open for questions. Uh, I told you to be about 30 minutes. I think we're right on time for that. Uh, I'd love to invest with you. We love people investing in real estate and being part of our family or any family that focus on real estate. If there's any questions about TIFF, F Street, our private debt fund, or any of our pending deals, BD2, MF2, the reason there's two after them is we're on our second phase of them. Um, I'd love to uh, answer your question now. Uh, if you don't have one right now, um, always feel free to email me at scott at fstreet.com. So the question is, it's a great question, are TIFFs negotiable? And the, question, the answer is absolutely. TIFFs are the most negotiable uh, component. The, 
what happens in TIFFs is TIFFs have become public record. And so if you look at what happens when someone sets precedent, they usually ride that same path, whether it's a 15, 10, 15, 20, 33% number, whatever that number is, is generally um, um, how they're negotiated. There are many different components to them though. Some have that forgivable loan, some have assumption of loans, some have new loans that are being brought in. So yes, we negotiate and we work really hard to get the max leverage we can from the, from the village and, and the city. And most of the time they wanna give you <coughs> funds they can give you because it really helps the development and they know that. So absolutely negotiable and we, we have a great relationship with all these communities we negotiate with. So the question is, how do you go about finding communities that have TIFFs available? Most communities that you live in or play in or visit that you see some development in have TIFF available. Um, you can contact the mayor. Most, most communities have city administrators. If you contact the city administrator, uh, ask them, hey, do you offer TIFF? Is TIFF something you're pro or against? Um, you can Google search city of Oak Creek TIF, and you'll see all of the public records of all the approvals of TIFs. So if you're asking, hey, does my town, ABC town, offer TIF, send your town in, uh, type your town in and write TIF and see if they're providing any financing. Um, or you can call there. It's all public record. So everything that I'm doing and everything that this person's doing down the street is all available via public record, and it all gets approved through the legislative community you're in, which is usually a common council that will vote and approve for your developer agreement, which includes the subsidy. Question is, in the private debt fund, after 12 months, can people take out partial amounts of money? The answer is absolutely. It's your money. You can take out all of it, none of it, some of it, um, yes, the answer is absolutely. We have most people, we have about a 95% retention rate. Uh, the 5% leave because they have to pay taxes or something has to happen. Um, but most people stay and add to it. So um, yes, the answer is absolutely. If it's, if it's something you want to invest in today and you want to take back out 50% in 12 months, please do so. All right, guys. We're gonna wind up right at the 30 mark. Um, it's always great to be with you. I love putting on these webinars to answer questions and, and gain interest in our business at F Street. Um, I'm very passionate about what we do here as well as our team. And um, I'm grateful uh, for you joining us this evening. Do we have another question? Sure. So the, first, the question is, what is the, in a development, ground up development deal, what is the traditional period of time to which you would get back your principal investment? And then when, what would your cash flow be on a remaining basis? The first question I can answer really easy. Usually it's 36 to 60 months to which you would receive 100% of your principal on any deal. Every month you'll be receiving cash flow, which will reduce the amount of outstanding liability that is due to you. And so that goes down from those periods of time. So if you think about us building a project 12 to 14 months, we stabilize it for another 12 months. That puts us at 24 months and the cash flow starts <clears throat> during the month 25. We then would refinance in month uh, 36 and at that period of time return 50, 60, 70% of the cash flow. In BD2, for example, we have $8 million of equity already built in at the current appraisal we have. We're really confident that based on those numbers, once we build it and stabilize it, that at the 36 month mark, we should be able to refinance and return a lot of the investor's capital, if not all of it at that period of time, due to that massive spread that we've already created. So um, we, we, the longest you should consider having funds in is usually 60 months, and cash flow should begin to pay down that funds from month 24 to month 60 to return all of your equity. Um, the second question is, what happens, what is your equity worth in terms of future cash flow? It's really hard to answer that question on the camera right now, only because I have to look at each deal and tell you specifically, but there is an answer to your question and I'd love to answer it offline. I'll make sure someone gets back to you and we can, we can touch base on that if you want. Feel free to email me or um, we'll, we'll connect after this. All right, 
um, once again, thanks for being here. Uh, thanks for listening to us. Thanks for being part of F Street and our community. Um, we are grateful for your time and always grateful for your participation in our webinars. I uh, we look forward to seeing you on the next one. If you have any questions for me or didn't have a chance to answer your question tonight, please feel free to, re to reach out to me. Thank you. And uh, on behalf of myself and our entire team at F Street, we appreciate you. Thank you very much.